The veteran's name is Jane Dyer. They were born on, the, on November 11th, 1957. She served in the Air Force during the Cold War. She achieved the rank of captain, and we're recording this on May 1st, 2014. I'm Heidi Gerstmeyer, and I'm conducting the interview. No relation. So can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and how you came to join RTC? Sure, Heidi. I um, grew up near Easley, South Carolina. I am six of eight children, and we grew up in the country. Um, my dad's a Clemson grad, and he was very big on being independent and believing that anybody can do anything, especially his children could do anything. There was nothing we couldn't do. So uh, one of my favorite remembrances is somehow, I said I'm the number six child, between two boys. But my dad decided that our backyard of pine trees should become a garden. So we had to cut them down. So somehow I was selected to be the one to climb to the top of the pine tree and tie the rope around it and pull it down. Mm -hmm. So you get up there and the wind starts blowing, it's pretty scary. So doing things like that, being expected to do things like that, that you do it and you build the confidence. So there's another project you're selected for you would believe and know that you could do it. And I think it was his and my mom's support in that you could do anything. Don't be scared, give it a try, don't work out fine, but learn through experience and don't ever say no. Did you have family in the military? Yeah, my dad was he a Clemson graduate in 42, so he served in World War II. Mm -hmm. He was a um, mechanical engineer and he was in the Civil Engineering, Civil engineering Corps of the Army Air Force. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, he took his Clemson knowledge with him. He, in the Civil Engineering Corps, uh, as islands were taken in World War II in the Pacific, then they would go in and make them bases mm -hmm. for our guys. And so uh, it rained a lot over there. So he uh, would put concrete on the floor of his tent every place he went. So he came back and started a concrete company in Greenville. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's kind of where we got that. But I was the only one of the eight children to go in the military. Mm -hmm. And did, did you guys all come to Clemson or? Well, we have eight of us came to, seven of us came to Clemson and the one sister who was kind of the black sheep <laughs> went to the University of South Carolina uh -oh. and partied and flunked out and my dad kind of predicted the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but she's done great now. But she uh, supported his theory of the University of South Carolina. <laughs> so what was RTC like here? Um, RTC was interesting. I. Uh, was but I graduated in 81 so there weren't a lot of women I would say maybe three others over um, all four years yes well I transferred here so I was just here two years but there were maybe three other women and I was the first female um, group commander of Air Force ROTC at Clemson and then the first female to get selected to go to pilot training from Clemson University wow that's exciting so what was it like transitioning out of Clemson then well, when I went to pilot training, I had done all my math, and um, I was being sent to Laughlin Air Force Base, which is in Del Rio, Texas, which is probably the worst location of all the training bases. And um, the staff here at RROTC said nobody from Clemson had ever been sent to Laughlin. And what had I done? Why me? <laughs> I'm going, I don't know. But then I started thinking, okay. Um, the first women went to pilot training in 78, and this is 81, and there's only a few women, so they're probably trying to spread out the women in every class. Mm -hmm. So there should be two or three women in every class of pilot training of 60. Well, I show up in Del Rio, Texas, I am the only one, oh, yeah. and of my class of 60, probably 80% of them went to Texas A&M. And those guys are a little crazy. <laughs> so it was very interesting going into that environment. Yeah, what was that experience like being the only woman? Um, the most interesting part is that our class of 60 had to vote on um, class goals. And we had to have five goals for the class. Okay. One of the goals they voted on was to graduate with no women in the class. And they were serious. Are you serious? And of course there were instructors who didn't think women should be pilots. I mean, we were so early. So were somewhat and, like shunned. Oh yes, yeah. and when yeah. women showed up, they were automatically put on what they call special monitoring status, which is for people who are about to wash out. You were automatically put on it because you're a female. Oh my gosh! So how did you overcome that? Well, it was tough. I'll have to say that there's a lot of self-induced stress at the mm -hmm. beginning. You know, my told myself that every guy was going to determine whether women ought to fly or not based on my performance. Mm -hmm. So, and I did not have near. I had 
ne flown a uh, trainer in the Air Force during ROTC one time and loved it. That's why I went into it. Mm -hmm. But um, there were a lot of people who didn't want us to be there. And um, there was a time it came very close that I was not going to make it. Mm -hmm. But uh, luckily, everything here worked out, <laughs> and here I am, still flying. So did the instructors treat you the same way as well? Um, we got probably the more experienced instructors, but there were some that you flew with, and it was obvious that they would do anything possible to make sure you didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so luckily, well, even with that pressure, I... Yeah. survived and of course like everything you know there are people who don't make it in general there are a lot of people who don't make it through pilot training probably probably at that time probably 60 percent made it mm -hmm. i would think 70 percent so once your um, comrades saw you were being successful did they start treating you differently i thought that was a great or... lesson in my life was to see um toward the end of the program when i transitioned there's a basic training plane, and then you get to go to this sleeker, more of a fighter-type airplane. Everybody used to get to go fly that lot then. And back then, women couldn't be fighter pilots. We were still barred from a lot of opportunity. So um, back then, everybody went to this more sleek fighter airplane, which I um, got to fly. Mm -hmm. And um, I, my table mates, were, we got a very good instructor, and they were having trouble. So I got to fly every day. So suddenly, I'm like, I'm ahead of the class. I'm, you know, timeline ahead of the class. And it was interesting to see that their perception now was that she must be a really good pilot when before it was, you know, she's not going to make it. And it. how those kind of things affect how people think. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I did it and graduated and... Uh, proved them wrong. Yes, proved them wrong. I will have to say the best part about those Texas Aggie guys is they gave me a really, really hard time. A lot of them in good fun. That's One right. of them is now a three-star general in the Air Force and great guy. Um, but they gave me a really hard time. But I'll tell you today, if you ever say anything about Clemson, that's the year we won the national championship. <laughs> and they know that Clemson won the national championship in 1981. Good time to be around non-Clemson people. <laughs> that's right. So where did you go after that? Um, after that, I went to fly um, air refueling airplanes in Abilene, Texas at Dias Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And um, our job was to um, sit alert with the B-52s that had the nuclear bombs to go blow up Russia during the Cold War. And of course, they can't make it over there without a lot more gas. So there was an air refueling airplane for each B-52 to give them gas mm -hmm. as we would fly over the pole to get to as they would go over the pole to get to Russia. Oh, that's crazy. So, so I can imagine it's a pretty stressful job? Um, well, we got briefed every morning about how many minutes it would take the um, nuclear weapons off the submarines, the Russian submarines, to launch from the Russian submarine and hit our base. So you knew that if the, something happened, then the klaxon would go off, and that means get to your airplanes and follow the instructions, be it taxi, take off, or whatever. So everybody was ready, and this was just not just, you know, at our base, <clears throat> but there were many Air Force bases that had this, and then the missile units, and, you know, the plan back then was for us to blow each other a hundred times over, I mean, or more. I That's mean, it was really, really <laughs> amazing, and very interesting to see that the conflict kind of continues today yeah, between us and Russia, yes. So, what was it like at this base? Was it different than your training, or...? Um, the men, the commanders at this base, really, really did not like mm -hmm. women. In fact, <coughs> they said it was bad enough to have women pilots, but to have women who have opinions was intolerable. And I have an opinion about everything. <laughs> so they did yeah. not like me very much at all. And I just can't sit back and see things that are not right and shouldn't be and not say wow. anything. So I was not one of their favorite people. In fact, I went to my commander's office and said, Sir, obviously, I was a second lieutenant, and I not only set my alert, which in these airplanes you had to sit seven days and nights right by the airplanes in this building okay. with no windows and guys who like to sit in the dark for seven days and nights and watch TV. So um, he, I not only set my reserve, but he made me sit everybody else's too. The, every substitute time I was assigned it. And so I go to his office and said, sir, obviously there's a problem. Um, personality conflict, what can I do to remedy the situation? And he said, Lieutenant, get out of my office. 
It was bad. So I was delighted to leave that base oh my gosh. and then go be a, uh, an instructor pilot. And I taught people how to fly in the very first airplane you learn how to fly. And that was probably the most awesome job I've ever was had. Because the people have worked so hard to get there. You know, a lot of people, that's been their lifelong dream is to be an Air Force pilot. Mm -hmm. And they show up and they're hardworking and they're motivated and they're funny and it was a great job. I really, and the whole attitude there was much better than my previous assignment. Did you get to teach any women at all? Um, I flew, let me think, I did fly with like one woman one time, but I didn't have any mm -hmm. uh, women students. Considering you were now the superior, were you noticing a change in how people treated you at this point? Or? Well, yes, because of course the student wanted to do well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they treated me well. And, yeah. and there were still a few of the my superiors who had some problems, but they were much better in the Air Training Command than they had been in the Strategic Air Command the refueling. And kind of, it's like um, anything, when you have a group of people who have a really bad attitude about something, especially the leaders, mm -hmm. it's like a cancer. It festers. And even if people maybe didn't have that bad attitude when they got there and saw that it was acceptable and tolerated, then of course they got into it too. So I will have to say that my two girlfriends from there, there were three women pilots while I was there for two years. And one flies for American, one flies for United, and they are still two, my two dearest friends in the entire world. We went through yeah, a lot together. Cool. Yeah. Did they, do you know if they experienced similar things? Do you talk about that? Oh yes. We were all... They weren't as vocal as I was, so they were not treated exactly like I was. Um, but it was not fun for any of us. Right. So, but they w later went on. When I went to be an instructor in the training command, and when I went to fly um, a new KC-10 air refueling plane back then, and of course, when they got that new airplane in the Air Force, of course, this was a long time ago. Women couldn't fly it at mm -hmm. first because you know, I guess we could just break down and the world would end. Yeah. But, um, she, they had a board, and she was one of the two women that were the first women selected to fly it. So, wow. so amazing women, wonderful women. Yeah, you have some great just, connections. Yes, great. Yeah. Yes. That's cool. So, this job was in what city? You said in um, in back in Del Rio, Texas, where okay. I went through pilot training. All right, yes. and what did you do after Del Rio, Texas? Um, I got out. I met my husband in the Air Force. He's a retired Air Force pilot. He mm -hmm. had retired right as I was going to this assignment. So he went with me to 